Today I'm going to speak about one of the most important and hot topics in uh, transplant nephrology, which is antibody mediated rejection. I'll present this topic under two titles, how to diagnose and how to treat. I'm starting with diagnosis of antibody mediated rejection. So I'll be focusing on the introduction and then the mechanisms of both acute and chronic antibody mediated rejection and how to diagnose from the lab and the pathology. To start with, this is the genius Professor Joseph Murray, who, is, who was a transplant surgeon who carried out the first successful renal transplantation in human being at Brigham and Women's Hospital at Harvard Medical School in 1954. At this time, the uh, both immunological workup and immune suppressions were in their infancy. So the question is, is, what is the secret of success of this case? The secret of the success of this case is depending on identical twin as a donor. And so the graft was maintained for nine years without immune suppression until the graft failed because of recurrence of original kidney disease. I am honored to have this photo with uh, Professor Joseph Murray. Until 1969, the cross match uh, the cross match was not uh, considered in rare transplantation until Batil and Trazaki reported that if we transplant the patients with positive cross match, the outcome of kidney transplantation is poor and failure because of antibody mediated rejection. What's meant by positive cross match? This means that the patient uh, serum contains antibodies which after transplantations interact directly with the graft leading to humoral process. From, if we don't respect the positive cross match and we transplant it against positive cross match and without desensitization, the outcome is very poor. And instead of the, that the patient is discharged from operating theater with kidney transplantation, the patient is discharged from the operating theater after explanting the kidney. And with explantation of the kidney, this both the team, this, uh, the hospital, and the patient in a very critical situation. And this is a classic histopathology of the flurry type of antibody mediated rejection, which is well known as hyperacute rejection. So, based on this introduction, what about the mechanisms of antibody mediated rejection? If you look at this slide, the, uh, the starting point is the presence of antibody in the patient serum. This antibody binds to the endothelial uh, engines of the donor uh, graft that invites complements and the complements invites other cell inflammatory cells leading to stimulation of the coagulation and the platelet cascade ending with necrosis of the endothelial cell leading to path the pathology of antibody mediated reduction. If you look at this slide, this is Professor uh, Helmut Rinke, who is one of the, the most uh, prestigious professors of nephropathology uh, worldwide. And this is one of the, his, uh, his slides showing the, one of the morphological diagnostic criteria of acute antibody mediated rejection, which is peritubular capillaritis. If you look carefully, you find tubules here. This is one of the tubules, and this is another tubule. You don't find any infiltration in the tubules, but uh, between each tubule and the other, you will find a chain of inflammatory cells. These are the pre capillaries congested with uh, a lot of inflammatory cells, and this is, is known as pre capillaritis. And as you see here, this is the capillaries full of inflammatory cells, and here, this is in the glomeruli. You will find inflammatory cells, and here this is pre capillaries with linear deposition by C4D, by immunofluorescence, and by immunohistochemistry. And this is the full-blown picture of acute antibody-mediated rejection. Based on the graft function, we may have acute antibody-mediated rejection clinical or subclinical. If you have a patient with graft function, this means a rising of serum creatinine. And for this patient, you order a biopsy, and you find in the biopsy the one of the morphological criteria of acute antibody mediated rejection based on BAMF schema 2007, either the acute tuber necrosis type, peritoneal capillaritis, or transmural arthritis. This is one of the morphology. This is the morphological criteria of acute antibody mediated rejection, and the linear deposition of C4D in a diffuse manner by immune fluorescence 
or at least focal by immunized chemi chemistry. And then if you uh, test the serum of the patient will find the antibody which is zonal specific. So in this scenario, you have a patient with graft dysfunction and rising creatinine and the full blown histopathology of acute antibody mediated rejection and the evidence of donor specific antibody in the serum. So this is the classic clinical acute antibody mediated rejection. Another scenario, if you have a patient and you follow this patient with protocol biopsy, so the graft function in this situation is normal. There is no rising of serum creatinine, but when you order a biopsy and the patient is subject to biopsy, you'll find the biopsy, all the details of acute antibody mediated reduction, and in the serum, there is donor specific antibody, but the graft here is normal in its function. This is subclinical acute antibody mediated rejection, which is not debated. We should monitor this patient seriously about how to treat, there is, there is a, a debate in this issue. This is one of the most important slides in this presentation because it, show us, it shows and reflects the natural history and evolution of the humoral process. And when we start with this first point is that the patient is transplanted. So the, the lymphocytes of the recipients and the, the, the sera of the recipients is exposed to donor engine. And uh, as you see here, in all this, in this area, you will find the graft is functioning well. And so the only thing that appears here, the antibody. So the presence of donor specific antibody in the sera, this is one of the early marker and the most important markers. And here, although I am starting the presentation, this is one of the key messages of this, of this presentation that we should respect the presence of donor specific antibody and we should respect the patient history. So if you have a patient who is transplanted for the second, second time or since twice, we should respect the presence and serially follow up the presence of donor specific antibody. After the uh, a period, you will find the morphology of antibody mediated rejection. If you don't treat the patient um, uh, properly, the end result is the graft loss. So, to just to present the importance and the value and the critical role of donor specific antibody in the antibody mediated rejection, uh, I will try to convince you in the, in the coming sector. So, this is the report of Professor Lebo from the uh, University of Virginia. Professor Lebo showed that if you search for the presence of donor specific antibody and you find no donor specific antibody in the transplant in the recipient sera, the likelihood of antibody rejection is zero. So this reflects the importance of anti the presence of donor specific antibody for the diagnosis of antibody rejection. How can we detect the presence of donor specific antibody? Is one of these methods is the luminix technology, as you see here. And this is based on the mean fluorescence intensity and the cutoff point in the majority of the lab is around 1,000 1, mean fluorescence intensity. And the, the Illuminex depend on the beads. Uh, above the beads, there is a purified each antigen. So if you read in the mean fluorescence intensity antibody directly against a specific antigen, this is the antibody present in the patient sera. By knowing the donor HLA typing, you can now know if this antibody is donor specific or not. One of the merits of Luminex technology is very specific for anti HLA antibodies. So, in this example, this is uh, the, uh, the, in the red and the blue uh, sector, these are antibodies against the class 1, anti A25, A26, and A32. If you have the tissue type in the donor, you will find that the donor uh, HLA type is belonging to one of these or all of these. This means these are donor specific antibodies. In our, uh, in our center, we had an, a very nice experience. This is experience because we have, we have in our lab stored the sera for, the, for 153 patients before transplantations. And then we followed them for four years and all of them were, had negative cross match. So we, uh, after the following them for four years, we evaluated the pre-transplant sera uh, by luminex technology and uh, evaluating if the patient has 
if the patient has donor specific or non specific anti HLA antibodies. Here, if you observe the, the presence of donor specific antibody, was associated with acute antibody mediated rejection. So, five cases from 16 uh, patients had acute antibody mediated rejection. This reflects that the presence of donor specific antibody is one of the important criterion for antibody mediated rejection. Now, the question is the, what is the difference between cross match? and the donor specific antibody. Donor specific do, uh, cross match reflects the presence of donor specific antibody. So why by Luminex you can you may detect donor specific antibody and cross match is negative. The explanation is the concentration of antibody may be low that it cannot lead to a post of cross match or you may use non-sensitive methods of cross match or thirdly the antibody present in the patient sera are uh, belonging to non-fixing antibody, not, doesn't uh, fix the complement. Again, in this slide, if, you ha if there is donor-specific antibody, either against class 1 or class 2, or the patient developed acute antibody immediate rejection, the graft survival is affected drastically. This is regarding the preformed donor-specific antibody. What about the, present, the development of de novo anti chile antibody? or donor specific antibody. This, sli this study shows that if the patient develops donor specific antibody after transplantation, the outcome is poor. Another study showed that if there is, if there is anti chile antibody in the patient's sera, the, gra the five year graft survival is affected. So if, no, if there is no anti chile antibody, the five year graft survival is 83%. If there is anti chile antibody and it is not donor non specific five year survival is 70 percent but if the antibody is donor specific more than 50 percent of the graphs are lost within five years regarding the intensity of antibodies the main fluorescence intensity of the antibody reflects the concentration of antibody the higher the concentration of antibody the lower the graft survival, so the, and this reflects the intensity of antibody. If you look here, red and the blue are above the 6,000. This means the, uh, it's associated with lower graft survival. To the extent that some authors recommended, if you have high fluorescence intensity, that means high intensity and concentration of antibody, they recommended doing desensitization by IVIG and the plasma exchange before transplantation. One of important questions, if you have a patient and you followed him serially and at certain time point the patient has donor specific antibody and, uh, and the, the, so the, about the, this slide, one, imp one of important questions regarding the donor specific antibody is, is it important to know that the patient had in the past the, the donor specific antibody or the current Evaluation is just uh, what uh, all needed. If you for, if you look at this slide here, this, this is a big donor specific antibody in the past. As you see, the area under curve is broad, and it's very important because it may both the patient at risk for antibody immediate rejection. So we should respect the the history of the patients and uh, serially following the donor specific antibody. So peak or historical donor specific antibody is important, like the current antibodies. Another point in the donor specific antibody is it important to know the subclasses of IgG from this study? It, 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 it is not important to know subclasses, so just the donor specific IgG antibody is present or not. Another important point is, is knowing the fixing property of the antibody reflects a higher risk for the graft outcome. In this study, it doesn't differ. Either of the, this antibody is donor is complement fixing or not complement fixing. A new entity which is the de novo DQ donor specific antibody, as you see here, the present, the presence of DQ donor specific antibody, the poor the outcome of the graft survival. Again, if you have in the sera donor specific antibody plus complement deposition in the tissues, this is as you see here. This is the a very important because it carries poor risk and a poor graft survival. Another important histopathological phenomena is the micro 
circulation inflammation. What is meant by microcirculation inflammation, this is, this is, uh, is reflected by glomerulitis and or peritoneal capillaritis. So what is meant by glomerulitis, Number percentage of glomeruli containing inflammatory cells. If there is no glomeruli containing inflammatory cells, this is G0. If it, one to 25% of the glomeruli contains uh, inflammatory cells, G, G1, uh, 26 to 75 of the glomeruli contain inflammatory cells, G2, above 75% of the glomeruli contain inflammatory cells, G3, and the regarding the brittle capillaritis, number of luminal monocular cells and or neutrophils in the most inflamed cross uh, section, the brittle capillary in the cortex. If the inflammatory cell between 0 to 2, this is BTC0, between 3 to 4, BTC1, BTC2, 5 to 10, and above 10 inflammatory cells in the brittle capillary, this is BTC, BTC3. The new phenomena of microinflammation is to submit both glomerulitis and the peritoneal capillaritis to, uh, to a new uh, variable known as G plus BTC. So if you have G plus BTC0, the likelihood of development of the specific antibody is 20%. If it is above 0, mean one, means 1, the likelihood is 53%. And if it is above equal 5, this means that the patient will develop antibody by 89%. So it reflects the humoral process and it correlates with the specific antibody. And this, is, this study is very interesting because the presence of this index, G plus PTC above zero, is correlated with C4D uh, positive antibody mediated rejection, C4D negative antibody mediated rejection, or mixed cellular and humoral rejection. Because sometimes you have cellular rejection with some criteria of humoral rejection. If the humor rejection plus cellular rejection, the outcome is uh, much poorer than cellular rejection alone. If you look to this slide, if the G plus PTC is zero, the graph survival is, uh, is uh, accepted and is, is nice. But if the, uh, this summation score from one to three, the graph survival is affected and affected significantly and drastically if the G plus PTC is between four and five. Another important point from the histopathological point of view, if you look at the distribution of T regulatory cells in the histopathology, what is meant by T regulatory cells, this is a type, special type of T helper cell, so you'll find CD4, and CD25, so, so it's a CD4 plus CD25, and FOXCB3. So these are the three markers that denotes the presence of T regulatory cell. If you look at this slide, the blue central uh, nuclear part, this is the uh, Fox B3 and the brownish surrounding CD4. So it was found that the antibody mediated rejection is not associated with uh, the TRX cell. So if you find in the pathology abundance of TRX cell, the antibody mediated rejection is not uh, the diagnosis. Another important uh, new markers in the pathology is the interleukin 17 expression by tubular epithelial cell that denotes antibody mediated rejection. If you look here, this is the tumor epithelial cell and the immunohistochemistry showed the interleukin 17. This is in the antibody mediated rejection, but there is no interleukin 17 in the, here in the cellular rejection. So the presence of interleukin 17 expression by tumor epithelial cell is considered a marker for antibody mediated rejection. Another important marker form is the JAK2. So this is another new marker that can augment the diagnosis. Regarding the alemtuzumab, which is a canvas, was, it's one of molecular antibodies that is used in the induction therapy. Is if you look here carefully, after induction by alemtuzumab, basal is depleted, but again rebuilt after within a, uh, the, within a duration of if you for, if you look here within six weeks, it, it, it reaches the baseline and increase after one year. But uh, this study showed this study showed that the Although the number of B cells increased with the time, but there is a functional uh, changes because here the IgM is retained and the IgG is still suppressed after rebulation. So although the number is increased, but the function is not retained. However, when we induce the patient with alemtuzumab, we should follow him serially with donor specific antibody because these patients may develop donor specific antibody that may lead to antibody mediated rejection and affect the graft. 
last ban was held uh, in Paris in 2011, and they celebrated 20 years from the initial ban. And uh, beside the molecular pathology discussed in the in, the, in this ban, the one of the most important is C for D negative antibody mediated rejection. And I think that in the new coming ban on the 2013 that will be held in Brazil they will include C4 negative antibody mediated rejection in the definitive diagnostic criteria. What about the chronic antibody mediated rejection? It is very important because more and more evidence indicates that a high percentage of long-term allograft failures are due to chronic antibody mediated rejection. And this slide, show, this slide showed, shows the histopathology of chronic antibody mediated rejection, thickening of the basement membrane, and uh, here the uh, lamination of the peritoneal capillaries with C4D deposition. So this is a classic criteria. One of the important and the most important risk for the development of chronic antibody mediated rejection is the diagnosis of acute antibody mediated rejection. As you see here, the hazard ratio if the patient has in uh, acute antibody mediated rejection for development of chronic antibody mediated rejection is five. This means we should properly diagnose and treat acute antibody mediated rejection to um, prevent the development of chronic antibody mediated rejection. If we have patients and we, we follow them by biopsy and there is no transplanted glomerulopathy graph survival is okay, but if transplanted glomerulopathy plus no evidence of C4 the deposition in the tissues, this is midway prognosis. But when the cocktail of transverse glomerulopathy plus deposition of C4D in the peritoneal capillaries, this is the poorest uh, uh, sector and the graft outcome is drastically affected. One of the most important questions, if we find in the pathology transplant glomerulopathy, is this always denote the, uh, the presence of chronic antibody rejection? The study showed that uh, it is not always about chronic antibody rejection because transplant glomerulopathy may reflect the HCV associated or thrombotic angiopathy. So, but if we take all thing together, so if the patient is retransplanted and had uh, donor specific antibodies in certain time points, I showed both in the high probability of chronic antibody mediated rejection. Uh, one of the most important item and, uh, and new as well is the presence of de novo DQ and DSA uh, that may put the patient in the risk for transplant glomerulopathy. As you see here, the, the uh, odds ratio is 10 if there is donor uh, specific antibody against DQ, so we should put it in consideration. Another important point that correlates the presence of donor specific antibody and the development of arterial sclerosis was highlighted by this study. If you, if the patient has a donor below 50 year and transplanted, and as you see here, this is a protocol biopsy after three months with a classic arterial sclerosis. In this patient, there was no arterial sclerosis basally but the patient developed donor specific antibody and consequently arterial sclerosis that can affect the long term of the graft survival. Again, the microinflammatory score index, as I mentioned before, the pretubic capillaritis plus glomerulitis also reflects the development of chronic antibody mediated rejection. The, uh, what I mentioned is the anti HLA antibodies, but you can find humoral rejection. We, we, because of the presence of uh, non-traditional anti chile antibodies. So one of these antibodies is HY antibodies. These are antibodies, again, the minor HLA antigen present on Y chromosome. And so we can find it uh, classically if we transplant female with a donor uh, kidney coming from male, uh, male donor. Anti-mica antibodies, these are antibodies against the class 1 related and chains and this uh, uh, antigen is not expressed on lymphocytes so if you do classic cross match you'll find cross match negative but uh, if you do by technology you will find the antibody and this is this is uh, the new england paper showed that the presence of anti mica antibody is associated with uh, poorer graft outcome and but the recently another study was that was published one week ago showed that the presence of anti mica antibody is not, uh, doesn't affect the transplant outcome. Another antibody against the class C, so there are many antibodies. And this is one of the antibodies against the uh, uh, angiotensin 2 receptor. 
it is antibody, yes, but, but it will bind to the angiotensin 2. It lead to agonistic actions leading to uh, fluid angiotensin 2 action. And if you do biopsy for this patient, you'll find a picture simulating humor rejection. So, and the, the classic treatment of this, uh, if, you, if you diagnose the situation uh, belonging to this type of antibody, the treatment is angiotensin receptor blockers. Another antibody, antiglutathione, so there are, oh, there are many antibodies that can affect. Uh, re this is the sector of diagnosis. How to treat, this will be the next section. Thank you.